Happy opening day, everybody. You are Locked on Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Thursday, March 28th, 2024. Thank you so much for making Locked On Tigers your first listen. Every single day, we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, another spring has come and gone, and now it is officially Opening day, the Detroit Tigers at 4.10 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday. Today, as you are listening to this, will face off against the Chicago White Sox in a game that actually counts. And I am unbelievably excited. We are going to take this entire episode and do a season preview. If we have any time at the end, we'll discuss game one. Uh, but we do have not a game on Friday, so we'll have an opportunity to kind of preview the rest of the series going into the weekend on tomorrow's episode as well. So what comes with this season? What are all the questions that we have? What are our expectations? Also, you'd like the new background? Took a lot of time. <laughs> spent, spent all day doing it. I still feel like I need something if you're watching on YouTube. In here, something small there, and then like something small right there, too. But I think it looks good. I like it. New year, new me. Same me, though. Okay, so let's get into the 2024 season. Off rip. We don't bury the lead here. That's a lie. We do that a lot. I'm a journalist at heart. But usually with season previews, there's two things that I like to do a lot when having these conversations. One is say the record immediately. My season projection, 84 and 78. And the other thing that we do every single year, this is now, this will be my fourth season, but my third opening day, is give a, a theme to a, to the season. Last year, if you remember, was the year of the audition. That was our big talking point, right? There were so many young players. There were so many new faces. It was such a bad year in 2022, and there was so many different things happening and so many different auditions happening across the diamond and people trying to become and audition themselves to be long-term pieces on this baseball team. This year, we're calling the year of what if. What if everything goes wrong? What if everything goes right? There's so much volatility with this baseball team. There is a extremely wide gap between the best and worst case scenario for this ball team. A lot. A lot. Like a, a huge gap. What if everything goes wrong, right? What if injuries plague the pitching rotation, Riley Green as well, et cetera, et cetera, right? That's a really easy one you can kind of point to with any, but we have a rotation specifically made up of people that have all been hurt a lot over the last three years. Riley Green, obviously, has not given us even really close to a full, full, true season yet. What if the young players don't establish themselves, right? What if Parker Meadows' offense isn't major league ready? What if Kerry Carpenter, the last six weeks of the season where he didn't hit a home run last year, that's more in line of what he's going to do on a consistent basis. Torkelson, you can cut the year in half, right? Second half, well above league average hitter. OPS into the 800s. First half, different story. Which version of that are we going to get throughout the year? What if Colt Keith takes time to adjust? What if Tarek Skubal and the amount of innings that he's thrown, right? We kind of alluded to that earlier already. What if he, he he isn't able to throw, you know, 150, 170, 200 innings? Jack Flaherty, same thing. Casey Mize, same thing. Reese Olsen, first full season in the majors. So much is being expected and put on this kid because the stuff is so nasty, which I love and agree with. But what if, right? We don't have a ninth inning, like uh, a solidified answer for ninth inning as it stands on March 28th, 2024. What if the offense doesn't take 
that step forward that we have been begging for it to take for three years now, specifically the last two. But on the flip side, what if everything goes right? What if the best case scenario happens? What does that look like? Green and Torkelson burst onto the scene. Colt Keith is a legitimate American League Rookie of the Year candidate. Parker Meadows is a three-plus win player. Javi Baez isn't the worst hitter in baseball. <laughs> Low bar for him. Kerry Carpenter finds footing, right? Reestablishes kind of what he was before the last six weeks of the season. Tarek Skubal is a legitimate Cy Young candidate. Flaherty and Mize, their spring is the real deal. Alex Lang throws strikes and is an elite closer. The bullpen is as good as we think it can be. The depths, the depths, the depth is a valuable asset for this team. And the depth is right. And it proves everybody right. Matt Vierling has made his adjustments. Is is a legitimate Super utility type of player. Jake Rogers repeats and gets 20 home runs out of catcher. Chris Brown of Motor City Metrics had had a quote very early on in spring training that I've mentioned a few times here. And and the the reason why is because I think it's so true and and is is so prevalent in my thought process throughout this season. It's, you know, the, the two toughest types of players to predict in baseball are young players and players with riddled injury histories. You could argue that that is the entire Detroit Tigers team. And that's a little overly dramatic, but it's it's not too far off. So 84 and 78 is where I stand. As we stand today, assuming health, I I am more confident in the positives that will happen happening than the negatives. I I am more confident that more of the positives will happen than the negative. Both will. That's guaranteed. Negatives will happen 100 million percent. There will be players that underperform, multiple players that underperform, right? But I think that this year, the... Mental gymnastics, if you will, to to convince yourself and to justify, you know, the Tigers having a halfway decent season is less than it's been in the past. It's easier to convince yourself that the good is right in front of you. It's 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 more tangible. We've already seen some of it, and it's spring training. And I'm the person that's the loudest about spring training. You know, taking it with a big grain of salt. But there, there's there's a lot of good that we are already seeing. Let's talk about what I do expect, right? We've talked about the, the each kind of end of the bell curve, right? We've talked about what what if what's a catastrophic season look like? What's the worst case scenario? And then and then we've obviously talked about the best case. What if everything clicks? Let's talk about the few things that I I just straight up expect to happen. All right, we will do that right after this. Got to talk to y'all today about our friends over at Game Time. They are obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets over at Game Time. They have deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour and a half after the event starts. It's the place to find last minute deals, which is why I love it. My roommate and I use it all the time. Last second, just, hey, you want to go to the Wings game? You want to go to whatever? Game Time is the place and the app to use in those situations. And they also have zone deals where you can pick the section and uh, game time will pick the seats for big time savings. The game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. Even if you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will then credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDON for $20 off of your purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code locked on for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, everybody, welcome back. Segment two here at Locked on Tigers. Appreciate y'all so much for tuning in for another season. Like I said, it's time flies. Uh, this is 
going to be my my fourth season 2021 two three four yeah fourth season my third full season because I joined obviously in the middle of 2021 and and I am just so excited I think that the optimism is is probably the highest it's been since I took this position and, and you know whether the best case or worst case happens or most likely somewhere in the middle I uh, I, I am every day honored that people you know continue to to show up here and support this show so thank you and, and let's have a really really fun season all right also be sure to check out locked on sports today a free 24 7 sports streaming channel program for your everyday needs to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming that maybe fox or espn tv gives you throughout the day locked on sports today gives you can't miss analysis opinions and news 24 7 on youtube or for free on the amazon fire tv channels app so we're talking about the 2024 Detroit Tigers. I have them winning 84 baseball games this year. Last season, I had them winning 74, and they ended up obviously exceeding that. Now, last year, I was the optimist in the Detroit media world, right? Everybody else had 68 to 72, and they exceeded all of our expectations. But early on, I was like picked on for being the optimist. Now there, there's plenty of people that have much higher win totals than myself. Um, th there are obviously drop yours below first and foremost. Okay. That, as is tradition, please drop your season predictions, how you think the year is going to go, whether tweet them out comment section, you find a way to do it. Um, that that's is obviously as tradition here on locked on tigers, get, uh, get everybody's predictions together. But, you know, I, I want to talk about the things that I expect to see from the Detroit Tigers this year. Again, before the break, we kind of teased it. We've talked about both extremes. What are some things just that, that I expect to happen? I expect Tarek Skubal to have a freaking fantastic year. Every time I talk about Skubal, I almost drop an F-bomb. What is that? Why? Why? why I, I, it's just such a weird... That was really close. That was a really close call. Almost had to do editing very late at night. That would have not been fun. Um, Tarek Skubal, I think, is going to have a fantastic season. I also expect the bullpen to be really, really solid. Now, I have questions about a specific role in the bullpen. Not a surprise to anybody. We'll talk about that here in a second when we get to you know questions that I have. But this bullpen is very deep. It's the deepest it's been in, in a while, <laughs> in a long while. I fully expect Riley Green to have a fantastic season, assuming health. That's another thing that is really non-negotiable for me. He is an incredible talent. We saw when he was on the field last year, the signs of that happening. I am unbelievably excited to just watch. I feel like it's almost not talked about enough. Everyone's talking about Scooble and the pitching, et cetera. A full season of Riley Green could be unbelievably exciting. I expect Colt Keith to hit. Defense up in the air. You know, the, the the war, like value up in the air. He might get off to a slow start. This might be something in April. People are like, are you sure about that kind of thing? When it's all said and done, once we get to October, I fully expect him to have a solid rookie season under his belt. Not saying he's going to win rookie of the year or anything like that, but I expect him to hit at a minimum. And I expect Parker Meadows to be valuable. Now, that is that is very intentional terminology. I think there is legitimate questions about Parker Meadows' offense and what he can do in his first full season. But when it's all said and done, he's going to fly on the base paths and be unbelievably valuable in center field. This is a guy that if a lefty is on the mound, we'll talk about that at the end of the show because we're starting off the season against a lefty, might not be in the lineup against a ton of lefties, at least early on in the season especially. Or maybe it's he struggles early on and then the second half he's not regardless. That he's going to play a lot of games because we know A.J. Hinch is going to pinch hit and sub more than anybody else in the league, probably. And I fully expect Parker Meadows to be in the ninth inning in center field for most games, whether he started them or not. So those are things that I'm, that I'm expecting, I'm confident in. Depth is also a huge piece to this baseball team. Injuries will happen, and this organization is the deepest it has been in quite some time. There are major league baseball caliber players waiting in the wings. That's a good thing. That is a good problem to have. I do have questions for the year, though, obviously, right? Who is going to be the ninth inning, or, or I should say highest leverage reliever? I'm not, I'm not trying to upset AJ here. <laughs> Who is going to be the highest leverage reliever? 
who? Is it going to be Lang early on? Is it going to be Foley early on? Or, or is it going to be, I know we got to find out. Is Shelby Miller going to get an opportunity? We don't know on March 28th. So that is a legitimate question that I have. Third base is still a question. It's been a question since this time last year. It's been a question since going into the offseason, and it remains one. And I don't mean who will play third base. Gio Urshela, Matt Veerling, Andy Abanez, Zach McKinstry. We know who's going to play there. If Jace Young is raking, when does he get the call? Right? Is that a mid-season thing? Is that a post-trade deadline thing? Is that it depends on how good the team's doing thing? All things to consider. But what kind of production are we going to get out of third? Because something that we talked about a lot over the winter was, you know, everybody was upset that they didn't bring in a, a legitimate third baseman. And I understand that. And I, I resonated so, a lot of those thoughts, right? I didn't disagree with that opinion at all, actually. But a lot of their addition was by subtraction. And even though third base was just a black hole last year and, and not a lot of good came from it, a lot of the players that were a part of that and got legitimate playing time are not on this roster. Nick Maton led the team in games at third last season. Jonathan Scope played a lot of third in the first two and a half months of last season, right? So what kind of production are we going to get from third base? Individuals, I mean, there's a ton of questions for individuals. <laughs> Cole Keith, Jack Flaherty, Alex Lang, uh, you know, ability to throw strikes, Flaherty stay healthy and is the fastball velo in spring legit. Colt Keith, just first time facing major league pitching. Parker Meadows, we've already talked about, right? How is the offense going to translate? Tyler Holton. Tyler Holton is not going to have as good of a year as he did last season. That doesn't mean he can't be super valuable. But he was like, he was at a two ERA for a majority of the season and put up a ton of innings. Casey Mize, obviously one of the biggest question marks, if not the biggest question mark on this team going into the year. Spencer Torkelson's defense. Big question mark. I mean, the start of the season for Tork even, right? His spring was terrible. The biggest question mark I think I have is just, have they learned how to win? And that sounds so generic and cheesy and like it's out of a Disney movie. But like, that is that is real. You have to learn how to win. And I think that that's why I, I appreciate and love the fact that A.J. Hinch is this team's manager is because that is something that he's very adamant on. Learning to win. Learning the process, trusting the process, and, and learning how to win ball games. That's a real thing. You have to learn how to win consistently in this league. And that kind of transitions us into what I want to see from the Detroit Tigers this year. Uh, oh my goodness. More than, and this is just because it's right around the corner. More than anything, I would love to not be the worst baseball team I've ever seen in my life in the month of April. That'd be sweet. I would love to walk out of April with some optimism that the season's not completely lost on May 5th. That'd be great. And that's something that this team has dealt with in the entire A.J. Hinch era. And for all the credit I give him, obviously that is something that needs to be addressed. Now, players, right? 2022, every month was bad, right? Like That's not to say that obviously the players are the ones on the field and, and they have to step up and perform. But I think there's a lot of optimism because of two things. One, the schedule in April, but two, just how good spring training went for so many people. You talk about this April schedule, obviously the White Sox, you open the season, they're going to be one of the worst teams in baseball. So there you go. Instant opportunity to take two of three, three of three. The Mets, who knows what the Mets are going to be this year, right? Not a playoff team last season. The A's, one of the worst teams we've ever seen. The Pirates. Probably not contenders, at least in my eyes. Some people are kind of higher on them, but weren't very good last season. The Twins, you beat the Twins more than you lost to them last year. The Rangers, reigning champs. Twins, repeat. The Rays, really good baseball team. Then you end the month with the Royals and the Cardinals. The Royals, you are better than. I don't care that they had a fun offseason. You are better than the Royals still. And the Cardinals, obviously looking for a rebound type of season. That is a much, that, that is a, 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 Oh, I'm not, oh, ho, ho. I almost said the W word that we don't say. That was so close. Oh my goodness. If you watched the show last year, there, there's a, yeah, this is a, a, a month that <laughs> we can win games in. I'm not gonna, I didn't say winnable. You can't prove that I said that 
but this is a, a month that the team should be able to do damage in. And that's off rip what I want to see. But there's a few more things, and we will finish that list right after this. Got to talk to you all today about our friends over at Prize Picks. Football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for playoff home court, there's no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this time of year. So get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. You can also now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into a thousand dollars with NBA, NHL, college basketball entries all today on prize picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. And obviously it's baseball season. Okay. Prize picks has a lot of fun stats and players to look at this baseball season. Uh, go take a look. It is an absolute blast. You look at certain stats for specific players, and you decide whether you think they are going to obtain more or less than that number. It's really fun. Obviously, super fun to do with pitchers and strikeout totals. Super popular over there, but you can do hits. You can do total bases. There is so much fun this baseball season over at Prize Picks. So download the app today and use code LOCKEDONMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, everybody, welcome back. Your third and final segment of Locked On Tigers. I appreciate you all so much for tuning in. Happy opening day to all. Talking about what I want to see from the Tigers this year. We talked about April. That's a huge one. That's a huge one for everybody, right? Hit the ground running, be better in the month of April. Obviously, another thing I would love to see from the team this year, be competitive as late as possible into the season. If you listen to Locked On Red Wings with Brian and I, you know, our expectations for the Wings going into this year was be one of the better teams to miss the playoffs, be the best team to miss the playoffs. And, and or obviously play competitive enough hockey at the end of the season to get over the hump and get in and sneak into the postseason there. This is similar, obviously different sport, different postseason type of, uh, you know, setup and whatnot and who makes it and who doesn't. So it's a little different when it comes to wild card and obviously the AL Central is an anomaly with how bad it is. But just be competitive within your division later in the season. I want to play meaningful baseball games after the trade deadline. I want to play meaningful baseball games in September for the first time in so long. And I think that this team has the capability to do it. Being in a race throughout the summer, there's nothing like it. And i that's something I haven't felt <laughs> since high school, which I know some people probably look at and go, oh, wow, like, you know, whatever. Like, you're pretty young or whatnot. No, it's just been that long. <laughs> it's, been, it's been almost a decade. Another thing, I want to avoid big losing streaks. That's something that adds up so quickly. We lost, what, nine straight at one point, 10 straight in June last year when Riley Green got hurt. If you just break that up into three-game losing streak, win, three-game losing streak, win, three-game losing streak, win, and kind of just make it not roll over, you're talking about a, a baseball team that would have almost gone 500, maybe even gone 500 last year. So it's easy to just point and say, well, win games, you lose. I understand that. But losing streaks kill in baseball because it's such a long season. You cannot afford to lose 10, 12 games in a row. You can't let them pile up. You can't. And that's another thing that I'm kind of hoping for and expecting to see what I want to see, rather, out of the team this year. Beat up on the AL Central again. Another simple one. You did it last year. I think you're better than you were last year. Beat up on your own division. You've proven you can do it. Improve against the AL East. Another super easy one. You were absolutely just, I can't even think of an adjective, horrific <laughs> against the American League East last, last year. Really easy one to point to. What I want to see this year more than anything is just winning baseball. If you're non-competitive by the trade deadline again, something has gone wrong this year. Not saying you have to win the division for this. This isn't like win the AL Central or bust. Okay. It's not. You're still, you're, you're hopefully trending up at the end of the season still. We're going to have that conversation for 2025. But, but 
if you are out of it by the deadline, it's just an obvious sell, then this has gone wrong. Play competitive ball deeper and deeper and deeper into the year. And this is what we'll end on. This year is an opportunity. A legitimate opportunity. This isn't some overthought, again, like I said earlier, mental gymnastics of, well, this team has to do really well and this team has to has to do really poorly and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, to like justify the Tigers sneaking into the postseason. No, this, this division isn't good. The Twins didn't improve. If anything, they lost. They lost Sonny Gray, right? A lot of their best players have injury-riddled pasts, like almost all of them. There's a ton of question marks surrounding that baseball team. The Guardians will always be around. The Royals, I don't, again, all the credit in the world for spending, improving over the offseason. I I'm, I love when teams do that, okay? Not trying to be rude. They are still worse than you. You, you still have a better roster than the Kansas City Royals. And the White Sox are going to be one of the worst teams in baseball. You finished second last year, and you beat up every single team in your division. And you and the Royals are the only teams that got noticeably better throughout the offseason. You have a legitimate, real opportunity here. This isn't some mega optimistic fan, like fabricated, you know, opportunity that you're, you're trying to convince yourself is there. It's a real one that is present. You finished second a year ago. And had the one of the top two busiest offseasons within the division. It's a real opportunity. Take it. That is your 2024 season preview. We have a little bit of time. Let's talk about this series. Chicago White Sox, we've already talked about it, aren't going to be a very good baseball team this season. They're also starring Garrett Crochet on the mound, who uh, was an unbelievable talent. Obviously, we will see how he looks. This is a guy that has also dealt with some injury stuff, uh, some pretty major injury stuff uh, over the last couple of years. And this is his first career start is on opening day against you. Now, again, when healthy, this guy can throw gas. And again, it was out of the bullpen, so maybe slightly different. But from what we've seen out of him, the stuff is electric. The heater can get very, very, very electric. That is a that is a, a a good pitch when he is on, um, but a lot of command issues. If you want to be the dominate the strike zone team, Garrett Crochet could be a really good opportunity to be a dominate the strike zone team. Now we'll see. Again, no one's seen him start a game. Period. We'll see at full health. I'm glad he's fully healthy. Right, it's a guy that when when he's right, a lot of people think could end up being a pretty darn good pitcher in this league. But opening day first career start. And you have Tarek effing Scooble on the mound. Go win a baseball game. Okay? And if they lose, I'm not going to be doomsday. The season's over because we lost game one of 162. But it would be a huge wind out of the sails, objectively. Go win. Some questions surrounding this ball game. Uh, Crochet is very notably a lefty. So we're going to see our first left-handed lineup off rip. And with guys, obviously Green will be in there, um, but Kerry Carpenter did not play against lefties night in and night out last season. We'll see what that looks like. Parker Meadows, obviously, maybe the biggest question mark um, and uh, in determining what will happen with him. Uh, Colt Keith, right? Another rookie. Is he just going to go out there and be thrown into the fire game one? I would imagine he would be. Um, but but you you Zach McKinstry probably not going to start on opening day. It, it probably wasn't anyway, but probably definitely not against a a, a lefty flamethrower like that. I think this is a really unique opportunity to kind of see what the lineup, at least early on, it's very fluid. This is an AJ Hinge team. That's something I'll reiterate too. If Kerry Carpenter is not in the lineup, please do not freak out. Right, the second that a righty goes checks into that ball game, Kerry Carpenter is going to be in the on deck circle. Okay, he, he's <laughs> this is an AJ Hinch baseball team. We've had a couple of years to get used to it. You know, uh, I was I was the same way. You know, that you you see the lineup card, you get upset, you get riled up. Why is so and so not in the lineup? AJ uses his bench like no other, and uh, and and I'm not again. I don't have the lineup card. I don't know. Maybe Kerry Carpenter does start anyway, but uh, but. 
let let's let's just see how the game plays out. I'm so excited. Thank you so much again for coming back for another year. Um, yeah, this is truly the opportunity of a lifetime, and I love every second of it. And the the grind starts now. I've I've told my my friends and family that I'll I'll see them again in October. Right? It's it's going to be a a grind for sure. Um, but but we will be here every single day, and I, I take a lot of pride in that. And I am I am forever grateful that anybody chooses to listen to anything I have to say about uh, my favorite thing on the planet. It is truly, again, the uh, the opportunity of a lifetime. So um, thank you all for tuning in. Season four for me, but but year three. Um, but again, not about me, as I always say, about, about the Detroit Tigers. And I think that this is going to be an unbelievably, let, let's call it interesting, just for old time's sake. I think this is going to be a really, really fascinating season. And there's a lot that could go right. There's a lot that could go wrong. They play the games for a reason. And, you know, there's kind of that that adrenaline junkie in you that just goes, you know what, well, things can go wrong or, or really right or really wrong. And that kind of makes this really exciting, don't it? Let's go win some ball games. Let's go play some competitive baseball. Let's go over 500 for the first time in, what, eight years. Let's be competitive in this division for the first time in, what, eight years. Let's start winning again. Happy opening day, everybody. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Appreciate you all greatly for tuning in. We will be back tomorrow recapping game one and then talking about the rest of the series as well. All right. Back on the grind. Peace and love. Going to therapy's dope. I'll catch you all then, baby. It just felt good to say that. Game, game recap and preview. We're back. Go Tigers.